Hello everybody, previously I've taken a look at the Crosser 6 Hero by ASUS, but today I'd like to review a more budget-oriented high-end aim for motherboard with the X370 chipset. So this is the ASUS Prime X370 Pro, what could turn out to be one hell of a board for its price compared to all the features and connectivity on board. Right now this motherboard comes in at about 170 US dollars. First of all, inside a box, the Prime X370 Pro itself, the pretty standard but padded I.O. shield, four SATA cables, the ASUS Q connector, very kind to include at this price point an NVIDIA high bandwidth as library, all the documentation such as board layout, safety information and user guide, driver city, a coupon code for cable mod cables, and last but not least an M.2 screw package, which I for some reason forgot to film, not the first time this happens. The first impression in terms of aesthetics and layout, not bad at all actually. The layout in fact is seriously good, very clean, but even the looks aren't bad for an X370 board, costing just around $170. I think the only thing missing here is a shroud on the left, as seen on many boards these days. That would make the board look a bit nicer maybe, but would surely up the price for no real reason actually. What apparently cannot be dropped is RGB lighting. While this board may hardly come with any, it is on board in the audio section with several available effects. So in terms of chipset, we're talking X370, so feature-wise, we're getting all the bells and whistles here, even for overclocking. The AIM4 socket supports the current generation of Summit Ridge Ryzen CPUs, but will surely support at least another upcoming generation. A 10-phase VRM power design is really impressive and shouldn't be ignored. After all, this theoretically should make some quite decent overclocking possible. And those VRM heatsinks should be of great help in that regard. The PCH heatsink isn't too shabby either. Pretty solid components come into play here when it comes to the capacitors and chokes, and interestingly even two steel reinforced PCIe slots at this price point. Four DDR4 memory DIMM slots, dual channel with support for up to 3200 MHz and 64 GB at max. Expansion slots, two PCIe 3.0 x16 slots, a PCIe 2.0 x16 slot at x4 mode, as well as three PCIe 2.0 x1 slots. Two-way SLI and, if I'm correct, two-way Crossfire multi-GPU support. x16 in single GPU and x8 x8 mode in two-way. In total, eight SATA 6 GB per second ports, all from the X370 chipset, and and RAID 0, 1 and 10 support. Also on board an M.2 M key slot capable of SATA 6 gigabit per second or PCIe 3.0 X4 32 gigabit per second mode. A 22 1 10 11 centimeter long M.2 module can be installed at max. Audio wise this prime board is well equipped too. We're getting the Realtek ALC1220 8-channel 7.1 HD audio codec with up to a 120 decibel SNR, Nichicon capacitors for clean audio and as with most boards these days, isolation of the audio section from the rest of the PCB. LAN Intel's i211 AT gigabit LAN controller comes in action here and in terms of fan headers, 6 in total, 2 CPU ones, 2 system fan headers, as well as an AIO and a water pump header, PWM and DC modes for most headers by the way. When it comes to headers all across the board, here we have the front panel, one USB 3.1 Gen 1, two USB 2.0, TPM header, serial port or COM header, front panel HD audio, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 type C header and a four pin Aura RGB header. And as for power, nothing special, the 24 pin and eight pin ATX 12 volt connection. The IO is nothing too much out of the ordinary too, with a PS2 combo port, five USB 3.1 Gen 1, but two USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit per second type A and a single USB 3.1 Gen 2 type C port. Display port, HDMI 1.4B, the gigabit LAN port, five 3.5 millimeter audio jacks and the optical SPDIF output. The UEFI BIOS is pretty good and updates are rolling out quite frequently now. The easy as well as advanced mode is well organized with all the options where they should be and when it comes to the amount of such, quite solid I gotta say. Actually the BIOS even has all the neat overclocking features as seen on higher end boards, it's just the components that limit the max achievable overclock I guess. Components like phases. Because we are getting load line calibration and all that good stuff and also nice, the option to enable or disable SMT. That feature for instance was added while I was writing the script. 
To control the board's RGB LEDs, the Aura software needs to be installed. With it, we get a good variety of effects and colors to choose from, from a color wheel. At first, this board, or should I say its bias, wasn't that great and it did lead to some issues, mainly stability, fan control and CPU voltage issues. All these seem to be fixed now with the latest BIOS version at the time of this video. So I didn't experience any problems anymore. At stock with this Prime X370 Pro, my Ryzen 7 1700X, according to CPU-Z, runs at 1.253 volts. And I did in fact manage to overclock my CPU, completely stable stress tested with ADA64 and Cinebench at 3.7 and 3.9 GHz respectively. 4 GHz wasn't possible anymore, since I didn't want my chip to operate beyond the 1.35 or 1.36 volt mark. But at 3.7 GHz the voltage was at 1.188 volts, at 3.9 GHz 1.363 volts. So I can confirm, overclocking works quite well with this motherboard. Overall I'm extremely satisfied with how this Prime X370 Pro does, especially at its price tag of $170. The price performance ratio for sure is very good, no doubt. My Ryzen 7 1700X delivered great performance with this specific board, overclocked well with it, uh, what else? Pretty good aesthetics and last but not least, incredibly large amount of features and connectivity. Sure, no onboard buttons, debug LEDs, but it seems ASUS only focused on the most essential features, so enthusiasts don't miss out on any of these, while still keeping the price reasonably low for an X370 board. It's never been easier to recommend a motherboard so far than it is with this one. I can definitely recommend this ASUS Prime X370 Pro, now that the latest buys fixed all the issues it had. Gold, gold, gold award. Probably an X370 board with the best value. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.